paradigms control the results in your life. They have the power over everything from your relationships to your income. And when you shift your paradigm, everything in your life improves. Hello, I'm Bob Proctor, and I want to welcome you to Paradigm Shift, where we're going to teach you how to make dramatic improvements in the quality of your life. Now, here's something that you may not want to hear, but you've got to learn, and you've got to learn how to deal with it. When you decide to make a paradigm shift, I'm going to tell you what happens. You're going to raise the terror barrier. You're going to hit it like a wall of bricks, but you can go through it and you don't let it stop you. Now, without understanding the terror barrier, you could keep going back to the start over and over and over again. So the big question is, how are paradigms changed? And here's your answer. It's a lifetime commitment to a daily program of self-improvement. Now think of it. It's a lifetime commitment to a daily program of self-improvement. Now, if you're not involved in a daily program of self-improvement, that should that could seem like a humongous task. But you're involved in a, a lifetime commitment to feeding your body. You're involved in a lifetime commitment to showering and uh, sleeping. You're involved in a lifetime commitment to a whole lot of things. Why not just include maybe 30 or 60 minutes a day for the development of your own personality? Do you know it's like chipping away at a solid vein of gold? You can do nothing but win. So that's really what it's all about. Now, I want you to think of this for a moment. There's a power flowing into your consciousness, and as that power flows into your consciousness, you can make anything you want out of it. But odds are pretty good. We're going to think thoughts that are in harmony with our present conditioning. Now, I'm going to ask you to let your present conditioning be represented by X, X-type thoughts. X is the unknown factor. So we've got X-type conditioning, X-type behavior, X-type results. What type of thoughts would a person normally be entertaining? They'd be entertaining X-type thoughts. Let me give you a different way of looking at it. Let's suppose a person's earning $50,000 a year. Their behavior would be the behavior of a person that earns $50,000 a year. The results, $50,000 a year. What do you think they'd be thinking? They would be thinking the thoughts of a person that earns $50,000 a year. X-type thoughts. If it's X-type conditioning and you don't shift the paradigm, you're going to think X-type thoughts. Now, you can entertain other thoughts. You don't have to think X-type thoughts. But that's generally what people will do. Now, I call that bondage. We go from bondage, we go to something called reason. And this is where you entertain a Y-type thought. Y being bigger, better, different than X. Now, as long as the Y idea is just in your intellectual or your conscious mind, everything's fine. Nothing changes. You could be sitting down and decide to fantasize. and You're going to um, entertain the thought of earning $50,000 a month or maybe $150,000 a year, something substantially more than $50,000 a year. And as long as that idea remains in the consciousness, everything's fine. I'll give you an example of what I was talking about. I uh, was on the fire department in Toronto. It was the best job I'd ever had. Now, I'm going back many, many years. And I, um, I thought I'd stay there forever. They never fired anybody. No one ever quit. One person since 1934 quit. I was working seven days and seven nights a month. and we worked at night, we could go to bed. So, I mean, I was virtually retired. I was 26. So, I was looking at what I was doing as being the best thing in the world. Now, I decided after I started to rethink and grow rich that I wanted something better than what the fire department offered. I had no credentials, I had no formal education, I had no business experience. But that book inspired me to be thinking of Y-type thoughts. And you know, as long as I kept the idea in my consciousness, everything was fine. But I didn't do that. You know what I did? I started to get emotionally involved with the idea of earning a lot of money, of having my own business, of traveling all over the world. I mean, I was good at fantasizing. I had no difficulty with that. But when I started to get emotionally involved with it, it was just like all hell broke loose in my mind. Do you know, instantly my mind went from worry to fear to anxiety. And that's what you call hitting the terror barrier. 
The second you get involved in the idea of making a big change in your life, something happens. It's scary. And you hit the terror barrier, what do you do? You run right back to your safety zone, to bondage. And I was thinking, well, you know, the fire department's not that bad of a job. I get lots of time off. I'm drawing better than average income. You know, there's a pension. They can't fire you. You know, you go to work for the government. You'll never hear from them again. And that's where I was. But you see, it's almost like, how are you going to keep them down on the farm after they've seen TV? I had gotten emotionally involved with the why idea. Now, do you know, the only way around this is understanding. That's the only way. There's no other way. You really got to understand what's going on. When you start to get emotionally involved with an idea that is far beyond your present conditioning, everything goes a little nuts. Your nervous system is affected. It's what we call the terror barrier. Now, do you know, Thoreau once mentioned, he said, if a person will advance confidently, get in the direction of their dream and endeavor to live the life they've imagined. He didn't say you had to do it. I mean, I've taken this quote apart six ways to Sunday and just diagnosed it and looked at it. He said, if a person will advance confidently, get in the direction of their dream and endeavor to live the life they've imagined, give it your best shot, they will meet with success unexpected in common hours. Well, there's a few key parts to that. It says if. So, you know, there's a note. You don't have to do it. If a person will advance confidently. Well, I wasn't very confident. As a matter of fact, I wasn't confident at all. I was scared stiff. And anybody that goes to make a big move. Let's say a person quits a salary job to go on commission. That's a big move. Let's say you move from one country to another. I've moved from Canada to the United States to uh, England, to uh, Malaysia. I mean, I've moved all over. But the first one, <laughs> that was a tough one. When you go to make that first change, things happen inside of you. Now, you shouldn't let that stop you. You see, what you want to do is gain an understanding of what's causing the terror barrier. It's the paradigm. The paradigm is trying to hold you where you are. Now, keep in mind what the paradigm is. The paradigm is a multitude of habits that are fixed in the subconscious mind. And when you go to stir them up, everything goes crazy in your nervous system. It's worry, fear, anxiety. Now, I'm going to hit on that more in a few minutes. But it's, it's, it's not a nice thing. Now, you're either going to say, wait a minute. I understand what's causing this worry. It is not justified. It is not justified. It's the old conditioning that's causing it. But if I get emotionally involved with the worry, that's going to set up fear. And fear must be expressed through the only instrument it can, your physical body. And that's where the anxiety comes from. Well, you see, with the proper understanding, you can crash right through that terror barrier. You say, I'm, not, I'm just not going to do this. I'm going to go through that terror barrier. I'm going to end up with what I want. And the way to do that is continually play with the why idea over and over and over again. It may be scary, but I'm going to tell you the compensation is phenomenal. And that's where the repetition comes in. Now, that's essentially what I did, but I didn't understand what I was doing. I was reading the book, and I was listening to Earl Nightingale's condensed narration of the book. I'm driving around playing that record on a battery-operated record player. I'm going way back to the early 60s, and I kept playing this thing over and over and over, and I kept reading the book. Everybody told me I was crazy leaving the fire department. Do you know, within a year, I had 10% of the fire department working for me. I had my own company. My dream has been fulfilled. I've got business all over the world. Now I'm on a bigger idea. But I crashed through the terror barrier. I have come to the point where if a goal does not scare and excite me at the same time, I know the goal is probably not any good. If your goals don't scare you, you're going sideways. You're not going ahead at all. You're just not. You've got to get this right in your mind. You've got to understand that whenever you go to raise the bar to do something that you're not conditioned to do, the terror barrier comes up. And in, the only way around that is continually get involved in the why idea. Keep listening to it over and over and over again. Now, you see, we have a choice. We really have a choice. The choice rests in our own consciousness. And we can choose what we're going to plug into. We can choose to in, plug into what's wrong, or we can choose to, to plug into what's right. I'll tell you how I want, to, I want you to look at this. You've got the drawing of the mind and the body, the circle. 
The top half is the conscious mind. I want you to visualize a plus sign on one side of your mind and a negative sign on the other side. That's the negative and the positive. The positive and the negative, the yin and the yang, the inside, the outside, the up, the down, the hot, cold. It's the opposite side of the same thing. Now, you have a choice to which side you're going to plug into. If you are living in an ignorant state, I can guarantee you when this power flows into your consciousness, the paradigm will take over and you'll start to worry and doubt. Now, above the negative sign, I want you to put the word ignorance. Above the positive sign, put the word knowledge. See, it's knowledge that's going to get you to where you want to go. And the only way to get to the knowledge is to study. There's no other way. But if a person is into the negative, if, they, if they, they're starting to worry and doubt, understand when you're worrying and you're doubting, that is your choice. You have chosen to look at the downside of a situation. It's like the front and the back of something. Both sides are there. You can say, but it's real. It's there. Look at it. And you're right. It is real. You can justify why you should look at it. But that isn't going to do you any good. It's going to take you in the wrong direction. When you consciously get involved in a negative idea and you internalize that idea, you add emotion to it, you set up the only emotion you can, which is fear. Now, fear must be expressed through the only instrument. It can be expressed through your physical body. You see, the body is the instrument of the mind. And that fear is expressed on a physical level as anxiety. Now, most people, when they experience anxiety, they go to a doctor and they get loaded up on Valium. What they should do is understand what's causing the anxiety. But we don't do that. Do you know what the average individual does when they get that negative vibration? They suppress it. They hold it inside. They tell no one about it. They suppress it. And you know what happens when you suppress anxiety? You turn it into depression. Now, stop and think what I'm saying here. You go from an ignorant state. You start worrying. You're looking at all the things that could go wrong. What you should be looking at is all the things that could go right. But we get looking at what could go wrong, and we start to worry, and we start to doubt. And that's what happens when you hit that terror barrier. It knocks you right over onto the negative side. The doubt and the worry instantly turn into fear, instantly turn into anxiety. I mean, it just happens like that. You're dealing with the central nervous system. It's the most complex electrical system in the universe. Now, I don't think you want to live that way. I don't want to live that way. I used to live that way because I didn't understand what I was doing, what was happening to me. But now I understand what's happening. And instead of suppressing the anxiety, I get rid of it. I expel it. I tell it to get out. Go for a walk. It's not welcome. But a person that suppresses the anxiety, it turns into depression. Depression turns into dis-ease. Now, dis-ease is exactly what it says. It's a body not at ease. And that person's body starts to disintegrate. Now, that is a very, very negative track a person's on. It's important that you understand this. Now, what's the answer? Faith, based on understanding, is the key to success. Faith, based on understanding. Now, blind faith isn't worth much. People say, oh, blind faith. No, no, blind faith isn't worth much. First time you hit a terror barrier, the faith is gone. You know, there's a cute little story about the guy that's going to walk across the gorge in, in Niagara. I live real close to Niagara, so I'm very familiar with this. But the... Uh, the rapids are treacherous. I mean, they're just terrible. Well, he put a wire right across the, uh, the gorge, and he's going to walk across a high wire. So he's up there on his stick, and there's people all over the place, and they're watching. They're saying, go for it, go for it, you know. This guy's walking on a wire. He's got a big balancing beam. And then he puts that down, and he puts a wheelbarrow up on it. And he looks at this guy and says, you think I can make it? The guy says, sure, you can make it. He said, get in the barrel. <laughs> See, he didn't really believe it at all. You know, blind faith. Faith based on understanding. When we understand how our mind functions, when we understand what the paradigm's doing, when we understand that the paradigm is conditioning, it's in every cell of our being, and it flips us right over onto the negative, you know, we're sunk if we don't understand that. But when you do understand it, it's the key to freedom. It really is the key to freedom. Now think. I keep talking about this. There's a power flowing to and through. I want you to visualize an enormous funnel coming right into the top of your head. And there's an energy flowing right into your consciousness. And it has no form. It's pure, unadulterated, creative power. And you can take and you can build any idea you want. 
you're wondering, I wonder if this will work. I wonder if that works. It doesn't work. We work. It's our focus. It's our focus that determines whether we're going to make something happen or not. We wonder, we think it's something outside. I wonder if the economy will handle it. The economy's got nothing to do with it. I wonder if the marketplace, no, 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 it's not the marketplace. It's ourself. It's our own understanding. When that power flows in, we don't just think, we ask ourselves, what do I really want? And then we understand the paradigm is going to try and stop me. I'm going to overrule that paradigm. I'm not going to let it stop me. So what do I do? I look at the positive side. How do I do that? It's through understanding. I understand what's going on. I understand the paradigm's trying to stop me from following my dream. Now, there's only one way to develop understanding. There is no other way, just one way, and that's through study. And if you will make a commitment to a lifetime of study, you'll just change one paradigm after another. You'll keep breaking them. And they're going to have to keep being broken. You're going to have to continually have paradigm shifts. Now, I've been working at it consciously and deliberately for 45 years. And I know if I go for another 45 years, and I certainly hope I do, I'm going to continue to break the paradigms. I'm not going to let them control me. I absolutely refuse to. You see, we want to look at how it's going to happen. We want to understand there's laws. We want to understand that God gave us the ability to make choices. We want to know that we can consciously and deliberately choose to move in harmony with the law. And when we do, our whole world begins to change. See, understanding leads to something that everybody needs and very few people have. Understanding leads to faith. Now, faith based on understanding is what moves mountains. And it will move any mountain. It'll change your life. It'll make your life be everything it's supposed to be. Now, when the faith is expressed, remember we said the doubt and the worry causes fear and the fear causes anxiety. The anxiety is the fear being expressed. Whatever's impressed must be expressed. Well, when you impress understanding upon the subconscious, you develop an emotional state called faith. There's a feeling of strength inside you. You know that you're working with an infinite power that operates in an orderly manner. And so you move into a state of vibration called well-being. Well-being. Now, remember we said the anxiety, its polar opposite, was suppressed? Well-being's not suppressed. Well-being's expressed. Have you ever gone up to anybody and said, uh, hi, how are you? And they look around and say, I'm, I'm really excited. People don't do that. When they're in a good vibration, you see it. You see it in their actions. You see it the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they meet and greet people. There's something about them that you're attracted to. See, well-being's expressed. And that expression leads to acceleration. It picks up speed. Good things start to happen. It starts to get better. It starts to pick up speed. And do you know what else happens? You start to attract things to you. You attract good things to you. And do you know why? Because you're at ease. You are at ease. Now think about this for a moment. You're at ease. You have consciously and deliberately put every cell in your body into a relaxed state. I'll give you a good exercise. I have a friend of mine that was, he was pretty uptight a little while ago. And I said, you want to know what you should do? You should get the book, As a Man Thinketh. I, I mentioned on another series, if you go to asamanthinketh.net, you can download it. It won't cost you a dime. It's a phenomenal book. It's probably one of the best books I have ever read. And the last chapter is on serenity. Let me tell you how it starts. It says, calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. It is the result of long and patient effort in self-control. See, that's what we're doing, self-control. What's the polar opposite? Paradigm control. Calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. It's the result of long and patient effort in self-control. You know, there was an old ball guy, Branch Rickey. He was with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Now, I'm going back 100 years. But he was, he was really one of the ball guys of his day. He said he didn't care how far a guy could throw a ball or how accurate. He didn't care how far he could hit it. He didn't care how fast he could run. He didn't care how well he could catch it. 
If he wasn't as loose as ashes, he wouldn't hire him. Totally relaxed. Have you ever watched the runners when they're getting down to, you know, getting ready to run? They loosen their body. Totally relaxed. Do you know, when you're relaxed, all the chakras are open. The energy is flowing freely through you. You are in the vibration that you should be in to really make things happen in a big way. We're talking about using our creative powers. In another part of this series, I talked about our higher faculties, our mental faculties, our creative faculties, our mental muscles. If we really want to use them, we're going to have to be relaxed. Now, do you know when you're relaxed, when you're in charge of yourself? It's one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. It's one of the long and patience efforts, or the result of long and patience effort in self-control. That's what this series is about. That's what paradigm shift is all about. It's about self-control. It's about you being in charge of you. You're at ease. Practice relaxing. At any rate, I told this friend of mine to take the last chapter in As a Man Thinketh, the little book, and write it out, handwrite it, and carry it in his pocket and read it. Do you know, on two or three occasions I've been with him, there's been somebody else that needed the same prescription, and I've told them, and he's taken it out of his pocket and handed it to them. Here he says, you can have this, I'll go and do it again. Because he can see value in doing it, writing it over and over and over again. He's got that whole chapter. There's only four pages. He's got it memorized. And you know something? He's become a different human being. He really has. He is at ease. I don't see him uptight anymore. He's in a great vibration. Now, you see, when you're at ease, there's no disintegration. It's creation. And that's really what you want to do. You want to create the life that you want to create. So what is our choice? Our choice is that we can go through life in an ignorant state, worry and doubt. Let that lead to fear, which leads to anxiety, which leads to suppressing it, which turns into depression, disease and disintegration. Or we can go on the other side. We can study. We can make a commitment that we're going to study. Remember how I, I talk about the changing of paradigm is through repetition. It's the repetition of the information. When you get information like this, you want to study it over and over and over again. That's where understanding comes from. You understand the laws. Do you understand the laws of your being? Do you understand what they are? Do you understand how they function? Do you understand that there is a science to getting rich? Do you understand that health and happiness and wealth are normal, natural states for you to live in? This isn't a game we're playing. This is a life we're living. It's so important that we get this right. You see, understanding leads to a life of faith. We talked in another part of the series about being on purpose. Well, when you're on purpose and you understand the laws, you, you, you go beyond faith. You know what's going to happen. And that faith leads to well-being. What a beautiful way to live, you know? Live in a healthy, vibrant state. And the well-being is expressed. Do you know what you like? You might like being around people that send out good energy. Do you know you're, you've often been in a social setting where you may be standing around on a carpet and uh, chatting with a group of people. It might have been a cocktail party or a reception or something. And you suddenly feel someone come in the room. And you hear the chatter start to slow down. And you look over at the door, and sure enough, she's standing there. You don't know who she is, but you know she's somebody special. It's not somebody that you see on the big screen or on the tube. She's not on the cover of magazines, but you know she's somebody special. Do you know what you're looking at? You're looking at someone that knows they're special. I'm not talking about an ego trip. I'm talking about a healthy, conscious awareness of who they are. And that's what comes from understanding. They have faith in themselves. They've got a calm, confident attitude about them. And that's expressed in their well-being. It's an expression then. And the expression leads to acceleration. The acceleration leads to winning in everything in our life. You want to remember that faith based on understanding is truly the key to freedom. Now, I want to quickly review what we've covered here. We're talking about breaking the paradigms and understanding when we go to shift the paradigm, we are definitely going to run into a, a terror barrier. It's, it's a scary thing. And it's something that even when you understand it, it still scares you. But you don't let it stop you. It's like hitting a brick wall. 
You see people doing this all the time. They're making a decision to do something and they back off. They just don't do it. And you wonder, wonder why they don't. It's because they're scared and they're living in an ignorant state. They don't know how to change it. You see, your paradigm is controlling your thinking to an enormous degree. You are quite capable, and I don't even know what you earn, but I do know this. You can turn your annual income into a monthly income. You're very capable of doing that. Now, you may think that I'm exaggerating. You can't exaggerate when you start talking about the potential of a human being. Stop and take a look at the way we communicate today. I remember when I was a kid when I saw the first television set. If anybody had told me at that time it was black and white and it was snow and somebody would appear on the screen, then they'd go away again. If somebody had said, listen, in your lifetime, you'll be able to put one on your wrist. Self-contained in living color. Somebody can shoot something going on on the other side of the world. You can watch the Olympics on your wrist. You'd have thought they were right out of their mind, but all that's going on. In fact, that's nothing today compared to what we're capable of doing. You can stick a little camera on our computer and look at the other person and talk to them anywhere in the world. Doesn't even cost you a nickel. Are we moving ahead? I think we're moving ahead at a rapid rate. But I'm going to tell you something. The people that are taking this there are not letting the paradigm stop them. And I don't want you to let the paradigm stop you. I want you to stop and think of where you're going and what you're doing. And when you go to break out of the paradigm, it's because you're using a bigger idea than what you're conditioned to. Now, remember I said that conditioning has caused you to feel comfortable? It's only when you go to change the conditioning that you feel the discomfort. And when you get emotionally involved with it, you can be thinking of the change. Until you internalize it, nothing happens. But the second you internalize it, everything goes haywire. Why? You're dealing with the central nervous system. You're messing with the paradigm. You've heard the saying, habits die hard. Well, you put a million of them together and see what happens. Yet it's like a wall. And you bounce off that wall. And you'll go back and live in your conformed or, you know, state of bondage and justify why you should stay there. Don't let that happen. Absolutely refuse to let that happen. If you've got an inspiration to move, to quit your job, to start a business, whatever you want to do, step out and do it. I mentioned in another series that God's gift to us was more talent and ability than we'll ever hope to use in our lifetime. And our gift to God is to develop as much of that talent and ability as we can in this lifetime. You know, I would love to have the time at my command to go into this in a lot greater depth. Uh, but we just don't have that. I want to remind you that there are no shortcuts. You're going to have to study. You're going to have to pay the price. And although there's no shortcuts, that doesn't mean you can't take a quantum leap. I've watched people go from nothing to millions in a very short period of time. And it's through the transference of information and experience. That's what paradigm shift is all about. I want to uh, congratulate you for being involved in this series. And I look forward to seeing you in a real live seminar. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you.